Section 1.9 is on using systems to model data. In part A, we're going to look at perimeter, value, interest, and mixture problems. We're going to see one problem of each type. The problem solving method first involves defining each variable, then writing a system of two linear equations, solving the system using substitution or elimination, then we're going to describe the result, and optionally we can check each problem in our equations to make sure that the answer uh, works in the equations and also makes sense in the problem. And this first one is a perimeter problem. And the statement is that for a golden rectangle, the length is equal to about 1.62 times the width. So I'm going to highlight that statement. And the if an architect wants to design the base of a building to be a golden rectangle, I want to know what are the dimensions of the base if the perimeter is to be 100 feet. So the perimeter needs to be 100 feet. I want to know what are the dimensions of the base. Okay, so just like to kind of look over the information I'm given, and I want to figure out how to write not just one, but two equations with this information. So the first thing to do is figure out what my variables are going to be. So the variables need to be the types of things that we're trying to find. So um, what are the dimensions of the base is my question. So I can use base, uh, or um, I also usually call objects in a rectangle length and width. So base is just going to be whichever the length and the width is down. So how about I use length and width for the two variables. So L equals length. And we'll use W for width. Okay. Now base is not a third variable. It's just that in this context, I mean, the rectangle could be in either direction. And whichever one it is, base is just the one that's down. So I'm not sure if length is down or width is down. But we're going to call them length and width. So create two equations. For golden rectangle, the length is equal to, so the length is equal to about 1.62 times the width. So that actually is going to give me my first equation just in that first highlighted pink sentence right there. So length is equal to 1.62w is my first equation. The second equation is going to come from this perimeter statement. So all of these problems are going to require some sort of prior knowledge, and the perimeter setup requires the prior knowledge that perimeter of, an air, of a rectangle is equal to two lengths plus two widths. So instead of saying P equals, since I know the perimeter is 800, we're going to say 800 equals two lengths plus two widths. That's just from the fact that perimeter of a rectangle is equal to two times the length plus two times the width. Okay. Now, I get to choose between substitution or elimination, but since I have L already solved for, this is going to be perfect for a substitution when I get to the next step for solve. So I'm going to have 800 equals 2 times the expression 1.62w in place of L plus 2L. Uh, so sorry, I meant to write 2L plus 2W. I'm not sure. My pen wasn't doing what my mouth said earlier. 2 length plus 2 width. Hopefully that looks a little bit better now. And now we distribute or multiply this 2 times the 1.62. So with my calculator, let's find out 2 times 2 times 1.62 is 3.24 W plus the 2 W from the end here. And if I add those up, I should have 800 equals 5.24 W. But, excuse me. <laughs> Alright, now if I divide both sides by 5.24, we're going to get oops, 152.67 equals W. So W is 152.67. We'll round it to two decimal places, and then we will find our length. Coming back from the first statement, remember that once you find the W variable, you know that length was equal to 1.62 W. So I can plug that back in. I know that length then is going to have to be equal to 1.62 times 152.67. So multiplying on the calculator by 1.62 gives us 247.328, so 3.3. And last, interpret the results. That's just writing a quick little sentence here. So this rectangle has a length 
of 247.33 ticker units feet and a width of, what was it again, 152.67 feet. Okay, now you can check both of those into either of the original equations, and they should be true. Of course, if you rounded those values, it's going to be close to perfect. Um, if they're integers, you get the exact answer. Here, you should only be off by a decimal place. Okay. So three more of these in part A. We're going to look at the next one, which is our value type problem. So let's read through it real quick. We are managing a performance for a popular band. We booked a 20,000 seat amphitheater where you're expecting a sellout crowd. Market research indicates that buyers are willing to pay $75 for the good seats and $50 for seats that are further from the stage. And our goal is to take in $1.2 million from ticket sales. So how many tickets should I designate at each price level so that each price level um how many tickets at each price level is helping me decide what the variables need to be I need to figure out how many for each price level i'm just going to use letters x and y x equals how many so the number of 75 dollar seats and we'll let y equal the number of 50 dollar seats Now, if the number of $25 seats is X and the number of $50 seats is Y and we want to sell out the entire 20,000 seats, then the sum X plus Y has to total 20,000. Does that make sense? We're trying to sell them all out so there don't there to be any seats vacant. So all the seats added together needs to equal the total number of seats in the arena. Okay. Now the second equation is the value equation, and that equation comes from the fact that the X seats are worth $75, so 75 times X, plus the Y seats are worth $50, so $50 times Y would equal the total amount of money that we bring in. $75 for each of these, $50 for each of these will equal the total amount of money. The total amount of money is 1.2 million. I can't just write 1.2 here because the units in 75 and the units in 50 are not millions, so I need to write it out in uh, full form. So 100, um, sorry, 1.2 million is going to be uh, 1,200,000. So it should have that many zeros to make sure that the one is in the millions place and so on. Now, I can use either substitution or elimination to solve this system. It wouldn't be too difficult to solve for one of the variables in the first equation, and I also could easily multiply by a value to get um, sub elimination to work. Since I used substitution in the last one, I'm gonna go ahead and use elimination this time. I wanna use elimination. I'm looking at my GCF, 75 and 50. Um, since one goes into 75 and one goes into 50, those are both gonna work. The smaller one is 50, so I'm gonna take my top equation I'm going to multiply it by negative 50 to get a positive 50 in the bottom equation and a negative 50 in the top equation. That's going to give me negative 50 times x minus 50 times y equals, and if you multiply 20,000 times uh, negative 50, you'll know that it's equal to negative a million. with the right number of zeros down, that should be six. Okay. And the second equation was gonna have no change since it already had the positive 50 for y. So I'm eliminating y right here. Okay, so the y's add up to zero and negative 50 plus 75 is going to be 25x. Negative a million plus 1,200,000 is 200,000. And if you divide both sides by 25, we'll get our x value. So you take 200,000 divided by 25 gives me 8,000. Okay. Now that I know one of the variables, I need to plug it back into an equation to find the other. I'm gonna use 
either equation, but I'm going to pick the top one in its original state because with no coefficients, that one's going to be the easiest one to plug values into. So I'm going to have 8,000 plus y equals 20,000. And if you subtract 8,000 from both sides, 20,000 minus 8,000 should be 12,000. In conclusion, they should uh, there should be so eight thousand uh, of the cost on x. Look back up here, eight thousand of the seventy-five dollar seats, and there should be twelve thousand of the. $50 seats if they want it to sell out. Okay, flipping this page to the back, we come to our interest problem. So when we're investing money, we must balance the growth of the potential investment with the risk involved. My goal is to have $50,000 to cover my expenses 10 years from now. I plan to invest some money in a conservative investment with an average of 5% return annually, and I'm willing to invest twice as much in a higher risk investment that's going to yield 9% annually. Okay. In order to reach my ultimate goal, I need to make $1,950 in interest next year. How much must I invest in each account? Okay. Now, couple things to point out right here. Um, what, I know, what I know about interest is that you can calculate interest by multiplying principal times rate times time. This is the simple interest formula. And I also know that um, if I want to calculate the amount of interest earned annually, annually is in one year. And since my rates are both annual rates, the bit up here about the 5,000 of 50,000 in 10 years is extra info. That's an eventual goal, but it's not part of what I need to know since I know that I already figured out in some way that I need to make this much interest this year. So next year in one year. Okay. So um, sometimes we need to try to, to skim through a problem and find out what information is relevant and what information is not. The way this kind of simple interest works, these rates will give you the amount of interest in one year. So I, I can't deal 10 years out with an interest rate like this. Okay, so that's extra info. Oops. All right, <clears throat> back to the two equations that I need. First of all, how much interest in each account. So I need to set up my variables, whatever you want to call them. I'll just call them X and Y. And X is going to be the amount of money in the 5% account or conservative account. And Y is going to be the amount of money in the 9% or high risk account. All right. So I've highlighted that I'm willing to invest twice as much in the high risk investment. So that means the amount that I put in high risk Y can be two times the amount I put in the lower risk X. I have twice as much in the high risk. High risk equals two times the conservative. That's my first equation. Okay, it just deals with the twice as much factor. The next equation is going to deal with the interest rates. I know the interest rates need to be converted into decimal to use them, so 5% is going to be 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 is going to be the interest rate for X account, plus 0 0.09 is going to be the interest rate for Y account. If you multiply the interest times the amount, it gives you the amount of interest. You take the amount of interest in each account and add them up. 
That should equal the total amount of interest at $1,950. Okay. Now this equation is set up to use substitution because you've already got y solved for, so we're going to use substitution to solve this one. So 0.05x plus 0 0.09 times 2x equals 1950. Okay. Um, and that gives me 0.05x plus 0 0.09 times 2 is 0.18x equals 1950. If you add those up, that should give you, uh, I don't know I was writing plus 0.23, but just 0.23. And then you can divide both sides by 0.23. So I need to do... 1950 divided by 0.23. So about $8,478.26. And, uh, okay, so now we want to find the amount in the y account. But I know that y is equal to 2 times x. So y, e oops, y equals two times that amount, which is $16,956.52. So in conclusion, in order to earn the $1,950 in one year, Okay, we need to invest $8,478.26 at 5% and $16,956.52 at 9%. There's one more example in part A, and this is our mixture problem. The mixture problem is very similar to the interest problem because it also involves percentages. It could be about a pharmacy. This one's about a chemist. This chemist checks a storeroom and discovers that she has a 10% alcohol solution and a 30% alcohol solution in stock, but the procedure that she wants to do requires 10 ounces of a 22% alcohol solution. How much of each stock solution should she mix to get the desired results? So how much of each stock solution are going to indicate the variables for me? The two stock solutions are the 10% and the 30%. So we're going to say X is going to be the amount of 10% solution. And y is going to be the amount of 30% solution. So she's going to dilute the 30% with a 10 to get 22. Okay. Now, all together, she needs 10 ounces. So that means that the amount of x that she pours together and the amount of y that she pours together needs to equal 10 because there's no point in storing a whole bunch of random um, percentages if you don't need them. So we would only make extra. Then it's a waste. You can waste her stuff. So we want to have to make exactly 10 ounces. So we want x plus y to be exactly 10. We're trying to be efficient here. Then the amount of alcohol that is in x is 10%. So that is 10% times x plus the amount that is in y is 30%. So 0 0.30 over 30% times y equals what I'm trying to make. My goal is 22%. So 22% times the amount that I need, because I need these to match up, right? I can't have a percentage times an amount, plus a percentage times an amount equal to just a percentage. It's got to yield a percentage times an amount to have the same type of units on both sides. Okay, so uh, let's just simplify this question or this uh, equation real quick, because I can do 22% times 10. I can drop those trailing zeros. So this equation simplifies to 0.1x plus 0.3y equals 2.2. 10 times 0.22 is 2.2. Okay, 
So now the two equations that I need to work with are x plus y equals 10 and 0.1x plus 0.3y equals 0.22. Okay, so we've done two with substitution, so we'll do this one with elimination just to keep it even. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by, well, I could choose 0.1 to get the x's or 0.3 to get the y's, so might as well do 0.1. So we have to use negative 0.1 both sides. So I have one positive and one negative 0.1 to eliminate. So negative 0.1x minus 0.1y equals negative 1. 0.1 times 10 is 1. Plus the equation 0.1x plus 0.3y equals 2.2. So the x's will eliminate since you've got one positive and one negative 0.1x. 0.1y plus 0.3y is 0.2y. And negative 1 plus 2.2 is 1.2. Now we divide both sides by 0.2. To solve for y, 1.2 divided by 0.2 is 6. So y equals 6. And back into either of the equations to solve. And if you're going to choose between these two, the simpler one is the one on top. So you're going to plug into the top. So you've got x unknown plus 6 for y equals 10. Subtract 6. You're going to get the x needs to be 4. Okay. So she needs to mix four amount. So the units on this amount are ounces. So four ounces of 10% solution with six ounces of 30% solution. And that is going to make exactly 10 ounces of 22% solution.